Good morning, Alexis Love Beauties and Flawless Man. Welcome back to another podcast episode. We're going to be reading from Our Daily Bread and 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 2. I exhort, therefore, that, first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of the thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Life is full of trade-offs, Lord, and I need to make one. Guide my search for a career when I can have both a life and a living your balance is not found running in a circle, but along a becking path where enough is more than significant, where money comes second to family, community in itself, where success takes on a new meaning, and where, in the giving up, I gain wealth beyond belief. Going back up into the reading in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 2, and I exhort, therefore, that, first of all, supplications, prayer, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, glorifying the Lord, praising the Lord, worshiping the Lord, thanking the Lord, Creating yourself to be a living sacrifice unto others to help bring people to the Lord is for all men. The thanksgiving, the supplication is for all men. The intercessing, praying on the behalf of someone is for all men. This is not just for Christian people. This is not just for Muslim people. This is not just for sober people. This is not just for rich people. Prayer, supplication, intercessing, giving thanks. This is to be made for all men. We all have to pray. We all have to pray for someone else. We all have to give thanks to the Lord. We all have to do these things. It is a requirement. Come on, Jesus. It is a necessary condition to be qualified by the Lord that we all do these things. For kings have to pray. For all that in authority, we have to pray, we have to intercede, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. The reason why we have to pray, the reason why we have to pray on the behalf of someone else, the reason why we have to give thanks unto the Lord, the reason why we have to be fruitful and multiply, the reason why we have this obligation over our life is because it is the authority. This is our power that brings us into a peaceable and honest life. When we are doing the things that the Lord asks us to do, there is a peace that passes all understanding. And with that peace is holiness from God. It's honesty. When we are operating out of the spirit and not of the flesh, we do not have to repent for our gifts. We do not have to feel bad or have sorrow for anything that the Lord blesses us with. We will be able to enjoy those things because we are doing what he asks us to do going back down into the person their testimony they said life is full of trade-offs lord and i need to make one life is a journey and at some point in our lives i decree and declare the alexis love beauties and the flawless man that when we get into communion with god the lord will begin to reveal the whys that how everything is working together for our good. I know he will do it for you because he has done it for me. And it's going to be a beautiful expectation. And you're going to feel so at peace when the Lord tell you why. And everything will make sense. No one can give you this revelation. You have to get this revelation from the Lord. So there is a lot of trade-offs. When you enter into a new season, when you become a new creature in Christ, you have to trade off, come on Jesus, the old life for the new life. If you never never taken an anger management management class you've never taken um seen any type of therapist or anything the lord is all of that the lord has all of the professions in the world that we need sometimes you go sometimes people would have to go you know, to therapy. And then sometimes people will have to go to the Lord. Example, I have tried therapy. It has not worked for me. So I had to go to the Lord. When the Lord 
you know, when when certain things seem like they're not working, maybe it's because you could do more or maybe it's because the Lord wants to release that from you. So life is for the trade offs. And sometimes when you're when you're going over into a new transition, when you're becoming a new person, you have to give those things off to the Lord to trade in the old life for a new life. And I need to make one. We have to make some decisions. We have to make the decision on who we want to to be this day what God would we serve will we love the one and hate the other we hate the other we hate Satan he is absolutely disgusting he is underneath our feet and that's the authority that we have when we pray we continue to sweep the enemy under our feet because he is our footstool going back down into the person their testimony they said guide my search for a new career while I can have both a life and a living we do not live We do not be living life when we're not living in our purpose. We're alive. That's what we call living in the matrix. That's what I like to call the American dream because everyone has been taught to live, to look, to think, and to do the same things. I'm not saying that it's not good that when you were growing up, you got a job when you were younger. Like we have to, life in this life is an experience. It's a trade-off. So we might have to, you know, work a job and different things like that. But at some point we're not living. This is why it's so imperative to train the child in the way that they should go and that way they never depart from the Lord that way when they get up in age they can go and trade off come on Jesus into their purpose coming from underneath your training they go off into their purpose but a lot of the times we don't trade that off because some of the parents don't qualify or have been caught in a strong delusion so we are allowing the the schools to train our children but the schools have now been corrupt they're taking out the wisdom that we need to know so it is responsible for us to train our own children that way they can have a a smooth transition trading off into their purpose the person in their testimony said i need help while i'm searching for my career so i can have a life and a living having a life is being able to be in the presence of the beautiful things god has created enjoying God's creation because we have dominion and power over God's creation because he gave us that we have the authority come on Jesus this is why the Lord said that all men have to pray all men have to intercede all men have to give thanksgiving we all have to do these things because this helps us to live living is being able to be free The person in their testimony said, your balance is not found running in a circle. The Lord's balance is an unbalanced lifestyle. Here on this channel, we are learning how to live a mental, well-balanced lifestyle, like a balance, a balance with love. I had some old friends that didn't end Lord for the purpose of this testimony because I just keep reading what the Lord said. When you are a new person, you don't talk about the old. Um, But I have known some people and they didn't have the balance. And I said it one time, I was like, it seemed like there's not any balance in this friendship as if... You know, you have to choose. You should never have to choose in a healthy relationship. You'll have balance. The Lord will give us balance in our relationship and our careers and our purpose. You're not, we're not going to, your purpose is not going to have you strung out like the jobs. Like the Lord is going to give you a strategic plan from how to use the 24 hours in a day you only get this from God some things are not taught some things are only going to be learned from God the Lord will give you a schedule for 24 hours of your day that's going to help you be balanced in your purpose and that's going to look different for everybody the Lord's balance is not found running in a circle like me trying to work three jobs trying to work seven days a week when we do that do too much trying to build this lifestyle this counterfeit lifestyle that's not even for us then that is how we continue to go on and on and on and just running around and the lord is not balanced in that because that's confusion and then there is no balance because you're so focused on getting the bag that you don't have time to talk to the lord i've seen it many times the lord is not found in running in a circle but along a beckoning path where enough is more than significant there is enough we 
have to begin to affirm these things. When I give the resources, I'm given the resources because there is things that maybe I'm not, you know, led to talk about at this time, or maybe that's not my calling to even talk about in general. So I share the Doxy uh, meditations. I share the Latoya Okia Academy. That way someone can help you get into your purpose. I have got help this whole time getting into my purpose. When you do that, the Lord is going to guide you in your career. That way you can have a life and a living. You can have balance and then speaking life over your life. The Lord is going to be sure that it is enough and it's going to be significant. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we decree and declare the blessing of Abraham and Lot. The blessing to where there is not enough room to receive. To where we'll have to buy land here. We'll have to get land there to just be able to for just to set up the foundation. Abraham and Lot had so many blessings due to their obedience, due to their prayers, come on Jesus, due to their supplication, their interceding, their thanksgiving to God to where they didn't even have enough land. Abraham is Lot's uncle. They were so obedient to God that they couldn't even stay on the same land. They had to separate. It was so many blessings going on to where their their men began to argue. And because they had the spirit of excellence, they said, you know what? We are men of God. So how about we just go to different lands? That way we're able to, you know, continue to be fruitful and multiply. That's what the Lord wants to do with us when we live a balanced lifestyle, when we are praying like he's asking us to do. Where money comes second to family, community and self, where money comes second to family. Money is not at the top of the list. At the top of the list is God. The second of the list will be our love, our kingdom spouse, because that is a blessing from God. Then our children, like money, money is important. And we never want to have scarcity mindsets about money. And we want to be able to attract money. But money has been getting us in trouble. I started looking at money differently when I started reading a body language of the president. There's content in their face. They must have knew that something was not not going to be right. We we don't have to do so much for money. We have to attract it with a different mindset, but not worship it. The money is here. And you can hear that from me because I used to, I done did, I done went to and from, I done, come on Jesus. I done went to and from living in a counterfeit delusion. I done went back and forth just trying to get this money. We don't have to do that. We don't have to do that. There is more than enough. And with the balanced lifestyle that the Lord gives us for being obedient, money comes second to family. The first thing we want to do is make sure we're taking care of our family and the community around us where success takes on a new meaning and where and then giving up, I gain wealth beyond belief. With this lifestyle that the Lord wants to give to us, success takes on a new meaning. Success is not about money. Success is about how you can create yourself to be a living sacrifice to help someone else. And then the money will come. Success will look different when we look at it different. Being successful is not just about how much money you have. You can be successful and poor. Come on, Jesus. I'm going to pull up this scripture that I've been reading recently just so we can get a better understanding of that. Now, excuse me, this is going to be a little longer, but we got to get this message out. So we're reading in Proverbs chapter 18, verses 16. And man's gifts make it room for him and bringeth him before great men, the gifts of God. So we don't have to go and chase this lifestyle. It's going to be because we're in our purpose to where we're put before great men. Now we're reading from Proverbs chapter 13, verses 6 through 10. Righteousness keepeth him that is a right in the way, but wickedness overthrow the sinner. So to be righteous is what's going to keep you up in the way. It's going to keep you up in the light of God. It's going to keep you in the presence of God to just be righteous. But the wickedness overthrows the sinner. So people that has evil in their hearts, they're continuing to do evil deeds. Those same things are going to come down 
down, the Lord is going to hand them over to the enemy and that's going to overthrow the sinner. There is that maketh himself rich, yet have nothing. There is that maketh himself poor, yet hath great riches. There is people that are doing things that they feel like is right for their life. So you might be trying to go to school or people be like, well, I'm going to go to school and I really don't know what I want to go for. When you get confused, come on, Jesus, in your career. Like the person in her testimony said, Lord, put me on a path to where I can have a career that I can live and live a lifestyle have a life and have a living but when we're not living like the lord wants us to then we get confused in those careers and when we make ourselves rich come on jesus i've done it i've tried to make myself rich that is when you don't have nothing you can't make yourself rich without god and when you do it's going to go downhill because the Lord's hand is not going to be on that. So whatever happened with you getting those riches, because the enemy has blessings as well. The enemy has money as well. The enemy can exalt as well. The enemy has limited power to try to imitate God as well. If you make yourself rich, you will have nothing. You will have no soul. As we see some people in our generation, unfortunately, we see how people have sold their souls and we see how they're trying to get out the contracts. This is not a strong delusion that we're seeing. This is not just a conspiracy that we're seeing. We're seeing the men and women cry out, trying to get out of these contracts, trying to stop getting the surgery. But because they have made themselves rich, come on, Jesus. They have nothing. There is that maketh himself poor, yet hath great riches. When you are walking with God and you begin to lose things like our Uncle Job, come on, Jesus. To the outside, it's going to look like you're poor. It's going to look like you don't have anything. But on the inside, you're going to have everything. When we go out into the world and we bless our brothers and sisters, what do they always say? They say, thank you. God bless you. We're looking on the outside that while they may not have a roof over their head, but they're rich on the inside. Come on, Jesus. We don't know what people have been through, but these people are rich. They have everything. And sometimes people don't even want anything from you. There is he that maketh himself rich, yet he has nothing. And there is he that maketh himself poor, yet he has great riches. The ransom of a man's life are his riches, but the poor heareth not rebuke. The ransom of a man's life are his riches. The man that makes themselves rich, his life is going to be on the line for those riches. We see people putting other people's lives on the line for their own riches. We see in it. The prime example that I can give is I try not to indulge in the media anymore. But, you know, from things I have seen, we're seeing it happen with Diddy. We're seeing it happen with Cardi B. It's not a conspiracy. It's real life. And the reason why the Lord is making examples is because he do not want us to follow in those paths. The ransom of a man's life are his riches. People are giving their life. People's going to have to give their lives for those riches. But the poor hear no rebuke. When you do and live the way the Lord wants you to and he blesses you, you don't have to repent for those blessings. You don't have to rebuke those blessings. Come on, Jesus. The light of the righteous rejoices, but the lamp of the wicked shall be put out for the righteous men and women. We have joy. We have peace. We are happy. But... For the lamp of the wicked, it shall be put out. I encourage you to watch that video when the Lord talks about write the vision and make it plain. Save yourself before the Lord blows out your candlestick. Only by pride cometh contention, but the well will be advised. But the well is advised with wisdom. Pride comes strife and death. But with the well is advised wisdom. The reason why we're still here learning and seeking is because somewhere deep down in our hearts, we are wise. It doesn't matter if we even have the, the faith, the small faith of a mustard seed. We are wise. We are trying. We are getting in position. And that's going to look different for everybody. It's going to be a different time for everybody. But I thank the Lord for the men and women that he have already set before me. It's no reason to be jealous of people. 
because somebody had to go before you to help you out. You had to see a Christian millionaire before you can know it was real. So don't be jealous of anyone. The well is advised with wisdom. This is why we're still here. The Lord said in Proverbs also that if we do not take wisdom, wisdom will laugh at us when we try to grab her. It is not good for man to live by bread alone, but to live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Come on, Jesus. So we have to get the wisdom now while it's available. We see what's going on in the world. We see how people are changing. The Bible is changing everything. And it's about to be election time. Election time is so big because just like we read in our word, there is politics. People always told us to stay out of politics to a certain extent, but politics does matter. We have to be wise as the serpent and know that around the time of election, that different things are changing. We heard about kings and queens and different things changing in the world also. So with wisdom, we want to keep our eyes open on that. But we don't want to focus too much on that because we, we are the children of God. So we'll be safe. We'll be good. But with the well, is it why it is wise wisdom? So this is why, you know, we keep getting signs and wonders. The people keep reaching out to us. People keep trying to help us. The Lord is putting people in our way to show us different things because he is trying to teach us how to be wise because we don't want to try to get wisdom when wisdom is done. We don't want to try to reach out to the Lord when he is done pouring out his spirit upon all flesh. We want to get with the Lord right now while it's hot, while he's hot. It's hot right now. The Lord is talking to a lot of people and through a lot of people. Alexis Love Beauties and Flawless Man, when you get time today, I encourage you to read 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 2. I also encourage you to read Proverbs chapter 13, verses 6 through 10. I love you. God bless you. Have a fantastic day. And just know to get in communion with God, and He's going to set you up to where you can live a life and live a life more abundantly. Wow.